iOS 16 is less than two months away. So in this video, I wanna cover five changes that we know about, five personal wishes that I have, and five really awesome fan-made concepts. But first, if you have an Apple Watch, you have to try Banwerk's new Artline collection. They feature arts by the world-famous Jean-Michel Basquiat, with three pieces to choose from, the panel of experts for a darker vibe, the horn players for a more stylish vibe, and my favorite, the beat bop for the super clean white look. Check out Banwerk by using the link below. And now, back to the video. Starting off with five iOS 16 changes that we already know about, the first one is the code name which according to Mark Gurman is Sydney. Now you'll probably know that Sydney is Australia's most populous city, with a population of 5.3 million. So maybe iOS 16's codename hints at some large changes all across the board. And I think it does because the second thing that we know about is that iOS 16 will indeed have some fairly significant enhancements. Enhancements to me sounds like improvements that would make the day-to-day -day usage a lot better. Improvements that could be an updated control center, a completely redesigned multitasking experience, now that's something that I'm really looking forward to, or some major improvements to the home screen. But regardless of what these enhancements are, Markerman believes that they are significant. The third change is an update to how notifications are handled. Right now, with iOS 15, I actually do think that notifications are done quite well. They're organized in chronological order, and if you get multiple notifications from the same app, they get grouped together, which you can then tap on to expand them. So I don't think we'll get to see many changes in terms of the functionality here, but I do think that we might see some changes in terms of how notifications look. They do take quite a lot of space at the moment, so I guess that Apple could reduce their height, or they could even come up with something more innovative and have them on two rows. One row for social notifications, like missed phone calls and messages, and then the second row for alerts, stuff like coupons and promotions from different apps. Uh, this is how I would do it. The fourth change is new health tracking features. And this is a really odd one, as this is usually something that an Apple Watch does. And then the health app would simply take the data from the Apple Watch and uh, display it here. iOS by itself doesn't really have a lot of health tracking functionality. So my theory here is that um, this is a new sleep tracking feature that your iPhone can do on its own without the need for an Apple Watch. There are apps such as Sleep Cycle that already do this. Uh, they can use the microphone and the accelerometer and gyroscope in your phone to detect when you go to sleep and exactly how long you've slept for, and then wake you up only when it detects that you're not in deep sleep, which keeps you from being drowsy in the morning. So I wouldn't be surprised if Apple starts adding such functionality directly into iOS. And the fifth change is some updates to focus mode with even more customization for users. I do hope that this allows us to hide all notifications, as right now, when you set the focus mode to do not disturb, you'll still be able to see your block notifications if you expand the view, which honestly makes zero sense. iOS should block all notifications, just like Android phones do, when you enable Do Not Disturb mode. I'm gonna show you some really awesome iOS 16 concepts, but before that, here are five iOS 16 changes that I would love to see, with my most desired one being always on functionality. The iPhone 13 Pro does already have an LTPO display, so this is something that Apple could enable in a future software update, such as iOS 16, easily. Keep in mind that a lot of Android phones, which do have always on displays, do lack LTPO panels, and some even lack OLED displays altogether. Some might say that surely they have a poor battery life then, but not necessarily. Samsung phones, at least, have been amazing at managing this. The second feature that I also want to see is reverse wireless charging. I'm not sure how many of you know this, but both the iPhone 12 as well as the 13s do support reverse wireless charging, but right now it only works with one product which is Apple's MagSafe battery bag. As long as your iPhone is charging via lightning and you place the MagSafe battery on top, the iPhone would not only charge itself, but also the battery pack through reverse wireless charging. But this is what I would really love to see enabled in iOS 16 so that we could charge, you know, our AirPods from the back of our iPhones. That would be so cool. The third feature that I would love to see is us being able to move widgets and uh, apps anywhere we want on the home screen. As right now, if you wanna have a couple of apps and widgets on, let's say, the bottom of your home screen, you cannot really do that, as iOS will always default uh, to having those starting from the top. And I guess that this was okay back when we only had apps, but uh, now when we also have widgets, 
it is very inconvenient. Number four, you know how when you swipe right, you get to this weird page that only has two purposes. It's a search page, uh, and then it's also um, a place to store more widgets. But these are all doable from the home screen already. If you swipe down, you get you know the search field, and then you already have the widgets which you can place on your home screen. Uh, my point is that there's no reason for this page to exist. It seems like it's just a leftover from back in the days when we couldn't really put widgets on a home screen. Therefore, I would love for this page to be replaced by a smart Siri page. Sort of like the old Google Now page on Android, if any of you remember that, where you would swipe right to get to this page that would lay out everything important for you in that day. Like when you have to leave for work to avoid traffic, what your next flight would be, your upcoming restaurant bookings, uh, all the news and all that sort of stuff. It would be awesome to get something similar with smart Siri suggestions on a dedicated page. Uh, what do you guys think? And the fifth thing that I would love to see is uh, simply a more usable app library. I think my biggest issue with the app library right now is that it will always be on the very last page to the right, meaning that if you already have three or four pages full of you know apps and widgets, you have to swipe all the way uh, to get to it, which is quite inconvenient. Apple could simply fix this by allowing us to swipe down for the app library. And uh, guess what? The current swipe down menu already has a search field just like the app library does. Those can and should be combined into just a single search. And with Siri suggestions moving to the page on the left, uh, the swipe down gesture would indeed be perfect for the app library. Of course, that I would also love for us to uh, be able to rename these automatic folders in the app library, or even better, uh, let us make our own folders, just like Samsung allows us to do in their own app drawer. These are just my thoughts and wishes, so um, yeah, I would love to hear what you guys think of them. And now, let's take a look at five iOS 16 concepts. The first one's from TechBlood on YouTube, and uh, he's showing us how true side-by-side -side multitasking could look and work on iOS 16. And this is something that I've been wanting for so many years now. The second concept is from and he's showing us how it would look like if we had interactive widgets in iOS that we could use just like the full app without necessarily having to open it. At the moment, if we tap on, let's say, notes widgets, uh, it simply opens up the app. The third concept is from 9tech11 and shows us a beautifully designed lock screen with support for widgets as well as more controls on the bottom. I really do hope that Apple makes something like this one day. The fourth concept is also from YouTube channel TechBlood and shows us how an always on display would look and work like. Absolutely love what he's done here. The fifth one is from a small creator, Sebastian ND5, who envisions the return of CoverFlow to the music app, which Apple removed many years ago. So there we go, five features, five wishes, and five concepts. Do let me know in the comments, what do you guys want to see the most in iOS 16? And make sure to subscribe for more Elite Summers episodes. We have one on the Apple Watch Series 8 coming later in the week. I'm Daniel, this has been Zenof Tech, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers.